How much network speed do you really need? I mean, I have one gig fiber from AT&T, but they offer up to five gig, and there are people saying that they're perfectly fine with their 100 megabit plans. Now wait, didn't I just do some videos on 100 gig networking? Surely there is a correct answer to our originally posed question though. Let's talk about it. Now, right off the bat, when discussing networking speeds, we're gonna hear the term gigabit or megabit, which refers to the bandwidth or network speed, and this sounds very similar to the gigabyte or megabyte that you hear when discussing file sizes or storage speeds. While they sound the same, they are very different numbers. One gigabit is equal to 0.125 gigabytes. So when you hear speeds like one gig or gigabit per second, that's actually 125 megabytes per second, which is much less impressive, right? I mean, a modern NVMe drive will do around 6,000 megabytes per second. The reason I want to clarify this is because it's just so confusing since network speeds are basically how fast you can move data, but we talk about data storage in a completely different unit of measurement. To answer the question of how much network speed you actually need, you first have to ask if we're talking about WAN or LAN speeds, or wide area network or local area network, or even more simply, external speeds versus internal speeds. Let's start with WAN speeds. This is going to be the speeds you pay your internet service provider for and will determine how fast you can download things from the internet or how fast you and your significant other can upload them. This number can vary wildly from 50 megabit per second up to 10 gigabit per second and all kinds of options in between. Cool, but how much do I need? Hold, hold your horses there, buckaroo. We're getting there. Let's take these two extremes and convert them to bytes to help conceptualize things and make them feel more tangible. That 50 megabit per second plane from HughesNet is actually 6.25 megabytes per second. Let's say you're trying to download the latest Call of Duty game, which can realistically be around 150 gigabytes. The math tells us that that will take over six and a half hours, and that's not really an uncommon size for games these days. And that 50 megabit per second advertised is up to 50 megabit per second. So realistically, we're seeing even lower speeds. Okay, but what about that crazy Google Fiber 10 gig plan? Well, doing the same math, that tells us that the same game should download in just two minutes. Big difference there, right? Now, in the real world, you're not gonna see download speeds that fast because when it comes to data transfers, you're always gonna be limited by your least common denominator. For example, when we download a file from the internet, that file lives on a storage server somewhere that has to be uploaded from their side, then downloaded to your side and stored on your internal drive. You could have the world's fastest storage on both ends with super fast, fancy Google 10 gig WAN speeds, but if the storage server on the other end only allows uploading at one gig speeds, that's all you're gonna get. I think this is the most common thing people see when they pay for their super holy shit speed internet, then don't notice any difference at all. I'm gonna go out on a limb right now and say that 99% of people out there don't need anything over one gig internet, basically for the reasons I mentioned before. Like, okay, if you have multiple people in your house that are always downloading massive files at the same time, maybe you can justify higher speeds, but that's not really common at all. Okay, cool, so I need one gig, got it. Whoa, 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 I didn't say all that, stop getting ahead of me. It's very possible that you can actually get by with much less. The most common use case these days is streaming, whether that's streaming things from the internet via Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, YouTube, Max, Sling, Crunchyroll, Apple, Paramount, Peacock, Tubi, Fubo, oh God, we get it. or uploading it via Twitch. Well, surprisingly, streaming really doesn't require that much speed. Netflix recommends just a 15 megabit per second connection for the 4K Ultra HD content. Yeah, 15 megabit. Hell, you can get a couple of those fired up with HughesNet. How does that even make sense? Well, that's kind of outside the scope of this video, but it all comes down to compression. We've gotten really good these days at compressing video into really small sizes designed to be streamed over the internet. The same goes for browsing the web. You really don't need that much, and for the most part, you'll only really notice a slow connection when you're downloading or uploading files. There is another factor that plays into your internet experience, which is ping, or how long it takes your PC to talk to the server on the other end. Like you may have really fast internet with tons of bandwidth, but if the ping is bad, you'll still experience things like web pages loading slow and even worse, lag in video games. 
For the most part, if you have fiber or cable internet, you're in much better shape than wireless setups like T-Mobile's 5G, HughesNet, or Starlink. So let me try to oversimplify this here. If you're a single person or a couple who just needs basic internet to browse the web and watch video, then 50 megabit per second is fine. If you've got a larger family who'll be streaming multiple things at the same time, it might be good to look for something around 100 megabit. If you're relying on downloading or uploading large files pretty often, like games, illegally obtained videos, or anything else, then you may want to splurge for a 500 megabit per second plan. If you want the premium experience and never want to have to worry about how many streams you have up or how long it's going to take to download a file, then snag a one gig plan. But hold on. I want to go even faster, so I'm going to go with that 10 gig plan. Checkmate. Well, here's the thing, big guy. Remember how I mentioned that network speeds are only as fast as the least common denominator? Well, one piece of that puzzle is also your local network connection speed. I've done plenty of videos on my channel where I talk about 10 gig networking, 40 gig networking, 100 gig networking, and all of that refers to the speed of my internal network or my LAN speeds. Basically, how fast I can transfer files between devices in my house. Okay, so what do I just need a 100 gig cable and boom, I can transfer my entire anime collection in four seconds? Well, no, you need storage that can do 100 gig on both sides. You need network cards on both sides that can do 100 gig. You need a network switch that can do 100 gig. You need a file transfer protocol that can do 100 gig. And then yeah, you need a cable that can do 100 gig. For the most part, once you're looking to do anything over 10 gig, it becomes way more complicated. For example, go to your favorite store and take a look at the computers to see what kind of network speeds they'll do, and also walk down the networking hardware aisle and read some of the speeds they offer. I'll actually do that now, so why don't y'all just come with me? Micro Center. It's, it's Micro Center. That's my favorite store. We're here at the Houston location, and conveniently enough, they've sponsored this portion of the video, so let's go in. All right, so here we are in one of their networking aisles, and you'll find that there's a lot of one gig stuff or gigabit stuff. So I have some TP-Link here, some Ubiquiti, there's all kinds of stuff from Asus and other brands, but you'll notice that a lot of it is gigabit ports. And if you keep looking and go up in price a little bit, you'll see some 2.5 stuff. And if you look hard enough, there is 10 gig, but for the most part, you're gonna be looking at one gig especially on modems. Now, if you have a very high speed WAN connection, then you do get modems that go up in speeds. But again, for the most part, you're looking at one gig. And honestly, that changes when you look at motherboards. So let's go take a look. Cool transition. So yeah, this is the wall of motherboards. There's a lot here. And honestly, this has changed probably in just this last year, this generation, where if you pick any recent uh, new chipset, if you pick a motherboard from that chipset off the uh, wall here and look, it's probably gonna have 2.5 gig, which it does. I didn't actually plan that. But what if we take something a bit less expensive? This is like budget. So this is gigabit. So even in the newest line at the very lowest end, you're still gonna see gigabit, but it's becoming more and more popular to see 2.5 gig on new builds and new motherboards. So make sure you're cognizant of that. When you buy this and want to fully utilize 2.5 gig that your networking, networking? That your networking equipment also matches. Now, if you buy something or have something older with one gig, there are PCIe cards that you can put in that will give you 2.5 gig or even 10 gig networking. But it's up to you to decide if you actually need that speed, but just make sure you read how fast your stuff is actually gonna go. So for internal networks, I'd say most people are perfectly fine with standard gigabit speeds. If you wanna step up from there to get faster backups, then it's usually not too bad to upgrade to 2.5 gig as it's becoming more popular. If you have a real need for super fast file transfers, then go with 10 gig, but it's obviously gonna cost more and require a bit more planning to make sure everything in the chain can handle it. Anything over 10 gig? No, just no. I mean, yeah, I get it. You have a specific reason for it and blah, 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 but this video isn't for you. If you run 25 gig or 100 gig networking in your home, then why the hell are you even watching this video? I mean, I appreciate it, but Come on. And I know at this point you're wondering why I haven't touched on Wi Fi, and that's because Wi Fi is a shit show and so wildly inconsistent. But 
I stand by my overgeneralization that with most modern devices, you're gonna see somewhere between 500 and 800 megabits per second. I don't care if you just bought a new Wi-Fi 7 device and read on Google that Wi-Fi 7 can do 10 gig speeds. Just, no. Maybe I'll do a whole video just for Wi-Fi, but I'm not touching that here. But yeah, that's my thoughts on networking speed. For the most part, you're gonna be fine paying for a 100 megabit per second plan and having one gig devices internally. Of course, there are reasons to go with faster speeds, but it's up to you to decide if it's necessary. And I hope this video helped make that decision more clear. If you like this video, then drop a like and subscribe if you wanna see more network related content. I wanna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my 100 gig WAN connection that is super fast and only costs $5 a month. Y'all are the best. And if you're still watching, you're HughesNet. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.